Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be playing around with Next Term. Um, so, Next Term is an open source server management software that you can use for SSH, VNC, or RDP, um, all within a browser once you host it um, on like a server or a computer itself. Um, the fun thing about this one is um, this was just a use case that I was actually reading on the self hosted subreddit that they were like, hey, you know, I'm trying to, you know, find a software that kind of encompasses all and can do all the things I need and instead they decided to build one which is amazing and you know it's one of the cool things that you kind of get to see um, in the you know te tech community and people creating things so I wanted to kind of showcase this one because like I actually played around with it a little bit and I was like yeah this is pretty cool especially for someone just going hey you know I want to try something out and do this so I want to show you guys how you can uh, try it out yourself and let's get started So what we'll do here is there's a few things. Um, so in this case, I'm going to host it on a server. Um, so I got to create my server. To do so, I have a few uh, playbooks um, with Ansible and um, setting up uh, some pipelines to essentially create my virtual machine on VMware. So the first thing I'll do is set up DNS. Um, being able to resolve things via DNS is the best thing ever. <clears throat> um, and if you uh, decide you don't want to use DNS, I would highly recommend to set up a DNS server. It's actually not too hard and I got a few videos about that, whether you want to set up like an actual DNS server with bind or set up a pie hole. Um, but in this case, we're going to just use our bind server with our GitLab pipeline to um, do this. So we'll create an entry for next term. We'll create an A record for this and we'll just do the next IP address in our um, home lab subnet. So 113 will be what it is add next term then what we we'll need to do is in our ansible playbooks is essentially add next term as an inventory um, so that our instance can hit it and configure it so we are added to our inventory file here and we'll add it to the bottom next term we'll commit this save and that's essentially all that we need to do in GitLab. Um, there really isn't too much. Um, most of this is all in my automation like series video on how to do some of this stuff. Um, so feel free to go check out that, that playlist. Um, then we get to our AWX, which is essentially like Ansible Automation Platform, Ansible Tower, whatever it's called now. But this is the open source version of it that got forked off. Um, pretty much very similar. But what we'll do here is create a new VM, patch it, Install Docker and Docker Compose because that's actually very important um, in this because they provide a Docker image to use. Um, and set up certs via our Step CA server and install Nginx and essentially use those certs to um, run it. So, what we'll do is enter the host name of what we want. So, next term, the IP, which was 113. The VM name is whatever I wanted to say in vCenter. I just label it Dragon just to note the differences between what my things is and um, what my home lab is. Uh, then the proxy address. So, the proxy address will be whatever we decide we want it to be, but it will, we're going to use the doc compose. So, the proxy will be going from 443 to 6989. Very unique port. So we'll proxy it to localhost 6989 and we'll hit next. Then we'll hit launch and essentially this will go through, walk through its process. Um, it takes a few minutes because, you know, creating a VM from a template, patching it, installing some software, creating some certs, and installing some more software will take a few seconds. So we'll fast forward the video once this is all completed. All right, now that it is all set up, we can open up a terminal, SSH to it, um, and next term dot dragon dot local. We'll accept the key and we will type in the password, which I think is this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now we're logged into our server. We can see that Docker is installed as it produces the commands that we want. So what we'll do is go back to the GitHub. Um, we'll just take the docker compose, which is pretty simple, um, nothing too fancy, it'll set up a docker volume, map it to app data, grab the image from their 
uh, image repository and pretty much run honestly. So we'll create a docker-compose.yaml file and we will just paste everything that they have in here and uh, save that. And then what we do is just a doc compose up hyphen D for detach and let it pull down. So it will essentially download everything, extract it. Um, and then once everything's extracted and pulled complete like this, it will then start running the container. Um, from there, everything should just essentially work and we should be able to hit the browser. So um, if you're doing this without doing an nginx proxy for you know TLS stuff, you can still use the 6989 port. Um, so it would just be HTTP, your server name, 6989 instead. Um, but in this case, we're, we're, we have a proxy, so hopefully it works. So we can do a docker ps hyphen a to see all the containers. We can see that this is up, created nine seconds ago, up status running eight seconds. The ports um, are, is what expected. So what we should be able to do is HTTPS next term dot dragon dot local and you will get a pop-up for your registration link so in this case we will uh, enter the information for login which is actually pretty cool that um, there is a login registration set up for this um, but you can see that it's pretty actually nice and also doc theme um, so there are a few things that you can do here so everything is um, the information pretty much tells you right click to add a new server so everything's in photo directory structure so you would have to create a folder first and then create a server underneath then you got details for this so in this case we're we'll going to do like next term dot dragon dot local you can change your server icon to be you know windows linux uh, ubuntu debian or whatever um, the server ip um, so we'll just do the same thing so that they match the protocol so you have you can use a unique port or you can switch the protocol to be whatever you want um, in this case we're going to do SSH then you want to click on identities and this is your, essentially your login information so in this case I logged in as root and this is the password for it I'm going to retype it just in case I typed it in wrong um, and then um, that's pretty much it there's nothing implemented for settings yet but we should be able to hit Oh, um, I guess if you move back and forth, I don't know if it would have said it, but we'll <laughs> retype it. So now you can see that we have an entry for our server to SSH to. So we can do that, click on it, and it will essentially prop prompt up prompt this the server. So you can see that we're actually already SSH'd in. It's pretty quick. We can do an LS. You can see the same thing that if we were to do an LS here, you get the same information. Um, Docker PSA. Um, so you get essentially, you know, an SSH session here. It's pretty neat. Um, you can do the same thing with RDP and VNC. Um, so you can add as many folders, um, separate things out as you want, um, and use it. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty simple. Um, this is very similar to like SSH Swifty um, for from an SSH perspective. Um, I kind of like the interface a little bit better um, because of just how it's formatted, but. That's just personal preference. Uh, you can obviously do do it however you want, um, but there you go. You can get started if you're looking for more centralized server management to be able to just hit machines without installing extra pieces of software um, to make it work like Tabby or whatever. Um, I'm going to probably still use Tabby because I just have it used so that it's, you know, big text and whatnot and everything. So, but this is super nice. So there you go, guys. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.